Uh, welcome, everybody, to the fourth episode of Data Art Conversations with Sports Betting Industry Leaders. Today's topic is entrepreneurs and sports betting. And today we're delighted to have Wayne Kimmel, managing partner at 76 Capital, as our special guest. Um, as always, um, my name is Russell Karp, and I am joined by Matt and Kevin, who are advisors here at Data Art. Uh, Wayne, thank you again for joining us. You know, we're, we're super excited to have you. I uh, appreciate your time, and everybody knows you're a very busy man. Um, so give us an idea of how you got to where you are today, a little background on you, and uh, really, how did you get to, to this point? Well, Russell, um, Kevin, Matthew, thank you for, for having me on, on your show. Um, I'm really excited to be here and, and share um, you know, my story, the 76 Capital story, and hopefully what we're building um, what well, we're all building together within the, the sports industry, the sports betting industry, and all the opportunities that are out there today. Uh, for me personally, I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, you may know Wilmington, Delaware. I don't know if you've had Joe Asher as one of your guests, the, now the former CEO of William Hill. We both are, are Delawareans. We grew up there. And, um, and you know, then after Growing up in Delaware, my, you know, I was my, my whole life, I really wanted to be a professional uh, baseball player or basketball player. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that did not work out. Uh, but I went to the University of Maryland and I went to Maryland and at Maryland, I since I couldn't play, I decided that I would broadcast the game. So I went to my freshman year, I went to the radio station and I ended up becoming the play by play um to host for both the basketball and football teams, which was a lot of fun while I was at college. Um, but, you know, like, like any nice Jewish boy, I would had to follow in the footsteps of my dad, you know, and that meant that I was going to be a lawyer because that's what he was. So that was the story. So right from, you know, right when I was, you know, getting ready to graduate from the University of Maryland and, and go to law school, I, I'll tell you a crazy story. I, I talk about it in, in my book. Um, you know, I'm sitting there in the press box with Tony Kornheiser and Michael Wilbom. And at the time, the two of them worked for the Washington Post. And I was just some kid and they're like, and we'd seen each other, you know, gotten to know each other over the last, you know, four years as I've been in college. And they said to me, so what's next? Where are you going? You going to some little town to become a broadcaster somewhere or some newspaper? And I said, no, I'm going to law school. They're like, oh, that's so smart because this media business you can't go anywhere with this, right? <laughs> so look, I, I, I think I think Tony and Michael have done really well with PTI and ESPN, and congratulations to them. And and what's exciting for for me is the fact that you know after going to law school and then not practicing with my dad, getting into the venture capital industry, um, you know, we're going out there as a 29 year old and raising my first venture capital fund. Been so fortunate to have been able to back some amazing entrepreneurs with some amazing companies, whether it was Seamless Web or the Take Care Health Systems, which are the clinics you now see inside of Walgreens, to re most recently backing Brian Musburger and Brent Musburger at VEASAN, which is now, you know, public as, as DraftKings, you know, and having, you know, the fact that what they're doing with DraftKings and then companies like Victory, which is now part of Fubo TV, it's been amazing to now get back into the sports world. And it was something that, you know, I, I never thought after I felt like that last broadcast in my senior year at University of Maryland would be my last time to really be in the sports, you know, quote unquote industry. But now with this unbelievable time that we're living in right now, where tech and entrepreneurship and sports have all come together, I'm back, you know, over the last, you know, four or five years back in sports, so happy. And it's what I, you know, tell all young people and, and my own children, like, if you don't love what you're doing, if you're not happy, if you don't want to jump out of bed every single day to do what you do, you're doing the wrong thing. Fortunately, um, I'm doing what I love. And I, I love what we're doing at 76 Capital, investing in entrepreneurs who are smart, who are passionate, who are nice who want to change the world, who want to literally transform the sports industry and make it better. And that's what's going on today. And man, it's fun. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we appreciate that background. Thank you. So it's interesting. So when you first got into the venture capital world, you really had no, you didn't have your sights set on sports, right? It was just, you know, whatever the most interesting investment opportunity was at that point. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, Russell, it was, it was amazing. Like, 
it was the mid nineties and I got out of law school and I had friends who were doing this thing called entrepreneurship. I didn't, I couldn't even spell that word. It was like some <laughs> French word. Like, what is, like, I don't even know what that was. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Kevin, I'm seriously, I, I, I had no <laughs> idea. Like I, I really didn't, I, I did not know the word. I certainly didn't know what a venture capitalist or an angel investor was. A venture capitalist sounds, I always tell people, it sounds like some like Star Wars kind of a thing. Like, what is that? And so I, I, I didn't even know what these, this stuff was, but what I did see were really passionate energetic, you know, young people like me, like doing big things, like wearing jeans and t-shirts and telling the suits what was up about this website thing and the internet. And like, like, that's amazing. The problem was I wasn't one of those entrepreneurs who actually had an idea. I wasn't, I, would, I didn't, I, but the thing is I, what I, what I felt like I was really good at or could become really good at was helping others and helping entrepreneurs become successful. Mm. So I learned about the world of investing and not knowing quite frankly enough to know that it was like quite, you know, impossible to start a venture capital fund on your own at a, as a 29 year old, I just went and did it. And that was my entrepreneurial piece, but I was more entrepreneurial in the, in, on the venture side and not specifically on building a, a business. I, I was building the business of my venture capital fund and then looking to go help others. Yeah. That's great. Thank I got I got to jump in here. I think your energy is amazing. You know, it's you know we Russell and I went to one of your events down in Philly, and just the way you can get people in a room and start networking and mentoring these there's all those kids from UPenn, um, and just the room was energetic. And I think that's because of you and your passion, you know, for what you're doing. Um, so when you look at your passions, does that influence, like, are you looking all the time? You seem really plugged into what, what consumers are thinking and what they're doing. You're always kind of looking around. You have a really smart team. How does like consumer behavior dictate a lot of your investments? Like, what are you seeing? And then you say, oh, we got to be in that. Well, I, th I think that's really important. And, and Kevin, you're right on. I mean, look, I, I, if I'm not passionate about it, if I'm not passionate about a company that we're investing in, if I don't really believe in the entrepreneur themselves, then it's really not for us. Like, it, you know, it may be the greatest idea in the world. It may be something that is um, in a, in an area that just, it wasn't, you know, and it, it's hard, it's hard now in a, in a good way because I just love sports. Right. So I'm, right. I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm so excited about this, but in the past when it would, it could have been like a, you know, a health tech company that was doing X, Y, and Z. And I just wasn't that into it. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'm, you know, how can I, how can I really invest in that entrepreneur and then get behind them all the way? But now, but when we see something that, that is really exciting that the, you know, we're like, you know what, if this actually works, because we invest in startups, we invest in ideas, we invest in these entrepreneurs who are literally trying to make the impossible possible. Like that is, first of all, it's so cool when the impossible becomes possible, right? Like that's the most amazing feeling ever when, I mean, like I'll give you an example, like in this, you know, like when I first met with, with Brian Musburger and Brent Musburger at the South Point in Las Vegas, and, and they should, they take me in the South Point, which I'd never been to before as a casino. I didn't realize what a big place this was. I didn't realize, you know, the fact that how much money was, was bet in their sports book. And they take me in and they show me this studio that they put in the middle of a sports book. And they plopped it right there in the middle of the sports book. They said, we are gonna build the CNBC of sports betting. I'm like, wow, whoa, wait. CNBC put a studio in the middle of this New York Stock Exchange and they're reporting directly from the floor, just like these guys were going to go do. And I was like, wow, that is, that's, that's crazy in a good way, right? Mm -hmm. I want to get behind them. Like that's something I think I can help. My, my experience, my relationships, my contacts could actually, we could actually be helpful to help build this business. It's not just the money. It's more than that when 76 Capital and myself, when we get involved in companies, it's about doing a lot more. And then, it, you know, going back to what, you know, one other piece that you said was we have to kind of look out into the future and not only what the consumer wants today, it's what we believe the consumer potentially would want in the future. 
And it's one of the things that I think that, you know, it's one of those things where the great entrepreneurs are really able to see around corners. They're really able to see into the future. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones that can, you know, I'll use the, the great Wayne Gretzky, right? You know, they're the ones who skate to where the puck's going, right? Like they, and they know where it's going. They're not where it's going. They know where it's going before it's even, where, where even it's before it was even hit, right? Or even, you know, you, you took a shot, like they, they go there. So that's the kind of thing. And my God, there is, it's so exciting to support, help, whatever you want to call it, an entrepreneur cheer for them. I love, you know, like cheering for them as well. When they're doing something that seems so hard and so out there and that others are not completely 100% into the fact that, oh yeah, sports betting and media, that's coming together. I mean, people at first were like, that isn't, that doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, look at the world we're in today. Deals being done left and right, right. with media companies and sports betting companies. Yeah, yeah that's why. So, <clears throat> go when, ahead, Matt. Sorry. So I, and so when you're when either you think about it or the best entrepreneurs in your portfolio are thinking about where the puck is going to pick up on that in sports today, sports is entertainment, sports media, sports betting, you know, all the above. Where what are some of the big rocks when you think about how is this world going to be different five years from now than it is today? Obviously, it's moving very quickly, as you said. Uh, you know, you look at an intermission on any sporting event; they're talking about updated betting lines and all that. So, where's it all heading over the next couple of years? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Matthew. First of all, I like you got to use the I had to use the the puck analogy, you know, with with you and all, and that your hockey stick behind you and the Rangers, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, picture behind you. So look, I think that where things are going is, and f- well, first of all, you, you mentioned about the speed, right? The speed is unbelievable how fast things have changed because May 14th of 2018 was when PASPA was overturned, which was the law that basically said <laughs> you can only have sports betting in the state of Nevada. And that was it. And then all of a sudden, Supreme Court overturns that. And there were a lot of people that worked very, very hard getting there or getting it done. But once it was done, it was like lightning. So first of all, we knew or we believed, we, you, know, you never know, we believed things, was gonna, things were going to go fast. So the minute I heard this, I booked my tickets. I went out west and I met, I met with a company in San Francisco which is now called, you know, Swish Analytics that we invested in right away. We then, you know, showed up, then I, then I showed up in Vegas and met guys like Brian Musburger and Matt Holt. Um, you know, so proud of our team. Our, our, our Sevenses Capital was just named, you know, CB Insights Top Venture Capital Fund in Nevada. Um, so excited about, you know, the fact that we were able to get that, uh, that award, you know, across, you know, I was so proud of our team that we were able to do that. Um, but we knew that something was happening and something was going to happen fast. And we needed to get in there because as builders of companies, our companies are, are, are young businesses. So it's going to take, take time to grow them to be something, to get to be, to get, to get to be big enough to, to really be players in the industry. So when we look out and kind of look into the, our crystal ball over the next five, 10 years, we think in general sports is going to be the number one industry in America. It, I mean, it, it's a bold statement, but it, you look at this trillion dollar industry today, you look at the kinds of deals that are being done, the hundred billion dollar plus deal that the NFL did with all the media networks. The fact that Roger Goodell, the guy who was against sports betting more than anybody has now basically said the future of the NFL is sports betting. All right, let's go, Roger. We love it. Like, I love it. I'm so excited to, that, that that's where he is. So these types of things b- make me believe that we have opportunities. I mean, we're, and we're so early. Like, you know, it seems like DraftKings, FanDuel, um, you know, some of those have kind of taken this lead and they're running away from the, you know, some of the, um, you know, the Caesars of the world, which is now has William Hill, where the MGMs and and others that, they need, they're sort of trying to catch up, but you know what? Don't count those guys out yet. And also don't count out new and upcoming, you know, sports books like, you know, like our company victory, which we sold to Fubo TV and what Fubo gaming is going to be in the future. Don't count those guys out because they're thinking about things differently. And the entrepreneurs 
of the sports betting industry, just like, look, I always use this analogy. Everyone, well, at least our age will say, right, thought that once Yahoo, you know, became Yahoo, it was a pretty good search engine. What they, they, they had mail, they had this, they had that, it was all good. You know, they had Yahoo Finance, what more do you need? And then Google comes around. And what did Google do? Literally left hooked them, knocked them out, okay? That's what is potentially coming down the pike with new and interesting and entrepreneurial um, people that are coming into this industry. People who have never even thought about being in this industry are now going, wait a second, um, I love sports. I normally just wait till five o'clock every single day to go in, you know, deal and, and, and do what I love. But wait, I can do what I love all day long. I can have a TV on in my office that I can have Visa on all day. I can have ESPN on all day. Oh my God, like set me up with that job, right? That's amazing. I, I want to do that. I mean, I don't, I, you know, and especially if you're on the West Coast, I mean, if you're on the West Coast, everything starts early. So you're, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible what's, what's possible. So anyway, from a sports betting perspective, we're so early. There's so much going to be happening. And then wait till we start getting into with the esports side of things. I mean, we're, we're just, we're just getting going. Now, you so mentioned, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go. <laughs> just a quick comment. You, you mentioned uh, Yahoo, uh, which is, you know, kind of a, you know, a, a good analogy of, uh, you know, you thought there was one dominant player in the market and all of a sudden, you know, they fell to number two, if not lower right, in some cases. Um, so, uh, Recently, as of two days ago, there was a uh, an acquisition by Apollo of Yahoo and AOL, and um, I did a little reading about it. And it seems like Apollo wants to position Yahoo somewhere in the sports betting space. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Because for me, I mean, there, there are some parallels because you know of all the fantasy uh, uh, leagues that Yahoo manages. Uh, but, and there was a deal Yahoo made a couple of years ago, I think with MGM or, or, or someone, uh, but, but now it seems like Apollo really wants to kind of push the Yahoo brand into sports betting. Um, do you have any comments on that? I'm just curious to get your perspective. Look, they're private equity guys. What do they do? They find stuff, they buy it, they try to dress it up a little bit, and then they're going to try to flip it. Um, and they will. And, and I'm sure they're going to try to make a run with Yahoo. And it's like going, what is it, the secondhand store or something? You know, like, you, what is it called? When you, you know, but they call the secondhand store something. Thrift shop? Yeah, they call it thrift shop. But then there's also like a, a um, an even higher level where I'm trying to think of what. Um, anyway, it's basically they're, they're trying to look, they're trying to dress up. They're going to dress this up. They're a multi bazillion dollar fund. Uh, one of their partners owns the 76ers and like, that's great. And, and that's amazing what they're going to go do, but they are, but they're big companies. I mean, they're taking two legacy businesses, Yahoo, AOL. I mean, who has AOL mail, you know, anymore Yahoo mail. Like it's just, it, it's, it's great. And they're going to try and they're, and quite frankly, I know some, re some really good people over at Yahoo sports and that's awesome that they're going to try. But what we're all about is getting behind that entrepreneur, that person, and who is looking to literally like bust up the industry, to do something that no one's ever done before. And that, those are the kinds of companies that are able to move faster. And they're able to you know, really move and, and, and be able to maneuver through all the different things that are happening out there right now, instead of having to move a kind of a large ship. And that's what's, that's what's going to happen, I believe, there. Um, look, it may, be, it may be a great opportunity in the future. They may look to start to, to buy. They could be a perfect situation where they could buy some startups moving in the, in the future. But for them to really be a dominant player, um, you got to bring in some major, major new thinkers um, and people that are really looking out into the future. Um, but if they, you look, know, it typically doesn't happen. But, but the one thing is they have so much money and they're so smart that maybe they can do what most private equity firms can't do. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, what, what led us, I think, to you originally, we, you know, like hearing you talk about what you invest in and other people invest in, you always talk about technology. 
being important, you know, it's like sports technology, which gets us excited because data arts a technology company. I think, you know, we were the kind of the back end of building Betfair. Uh, so we've been in it for 10 years and we look at the U S and we're looking probably like you at who are the next, you know, when you make an investment, how much tech do you look at the technology, you know, first, are you looking at how strong they are technologically or how exciting their product could be? Well, I, I, th I think the thing is, is, is Kevin, you're, you, you hit it on the head, right? So it's, it's the tech and it's the, it's the fact that, you know, what's the opportunity that they're, they're going after. Right. I just, it, it, it's the, it's, and it's also this reimagining of what sports betting is. I mean, it just, just because in Europe, the apps look a certain way that our apps have to look that way. No, like, no, they don't like they really don't. And just because, you know, DraftKings app looks a certain way, then, you know, FanDuel's looks the same. And so does William Hills and so does MGM's and whatever. Like they all look the same. They don't have to. And they, and I believe they won't in the future. Right. So, and, and, and that's the part that excites me. And that's where, you know, it's, it's the creativity of the entrepreneurs and the companies that will, that will make these next generation leaps. But at the same time, it comes down to the fact that you can, from a tech perspective, you can do so much more. You know, when you, you know, the, our, our apps should in a way have, you know, artificial intelligence in them, right? They should know, a, it's, it's like Amazon, right? I mean, Amazon started and it was, it was a good site to sell books. Now it's, it just knows what you want, right? <laughs> I mean, in a way, that's what's going to says it's a technology company. That's what, it's been day one, you know, so when we were trying to sell them music and, and Matt was selling them books, he was like, look, I'm, I'm a technology company. And yeah. he's always said that. And he's right. And he's, and he's right. And, he, and I think that's the thing that, and that's why companies like DraftKings are, you know, have market caps of $25 billion because they're building their tech, right? The tech is part of what they're doing. You know, I think that's, a, it's a very, very important piece of this. Um, and, you know, whether they're building it all themselves or they're using data art, I don't know. But I mean, but the thing is, is that your, their, their, their focus is around, is around that core, that core piece. Right. Uh, which then, if because if you have really good tech, as you know, you can then cons you can you can serve your consumer, you can serve, you know, your um, your fan in a better way, and that's one of the amazing things that has happened during this pandemic, is that teams and leagues, um, and and sports books are now going. Wait, we we uh, we now understand. We better have incredible technology, incredible backends. We got to, we have to be able to really know who our customers are. Um, because if we provide them with even, more, you know, with things that they're interested in, they'll do more with us. You know, we, you, you just don't know, like you may find out that, you know, you, you know, you, okay, just, just, you know, you just because someone's based in Philadelphia, like I am, you know, you know, maybe I'm not only a Philadelphia Phillies fan. Maybe I like another team. But how do you, how do you know that information? And that and that's and and that's where the media side of things. That's where you know the fantasy side of things. That's where the the free to play kind of side that comes into all of this. Um, your different habits that you have. If you take take into account all of those things, and then you basically spit back spit that back out to the to the consumer in a elegant way, and they basically you know you're basically saying oh it's time for kickoff, you know, of your Philadelphia Eagles, do you want to place your normal bet? You know, and it's talking to you and you just think it or you say it, or again, who knows? Because here's another thing. I mean, you know, we, Matthew, you asked, asked this earlier, like what's in the next five or 10 years. It's probably not that we're going to, the phone is going to look different. <laughs> like it's not just going to be the, the thin piece of glass we stick in our pockets, right? It's probably going to be something different. Because again, if someone would have told you you'd be putting glass in your pocket, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you'd be like, why would I do that? Like, that's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. So what will that next device be that Google or Apple or whomever, Samsung, you know, comes out with that will become the thing that we all 
hold or is implanted somewhere. I don't know, but like that, but that's the part where all of these now, now the, the business of sports betting, right. And the sports business has to, will have to um, adopt to that. And the industry in general was slow is quite frankly, slow to tech. Right. I mean, we've been using data and analytics in a lot of industries right, um, for a long time. Wall Street basically is not what it used to be. Right. The New York Stock Exchange, people are not there, you know, screaming and yelling and trying to trade tickets and all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, you go out to Vegas, you know, and, and you know, you get your ticket, you get your paper ticket or you go to a, you know, a, a sports book. And now the what, 28, one of the 28 states that's legalized sports betting. I think 21 are, are, are live now, but like some number around there, but like you can get your piece of paper, but you don't have to. That's the part that's unbelievable. That's the part that's one of the things that has happened, you know, from a tech perspective. I mean, I think, not that I think, I know that the old timers in Las Vegas were freaking out when the numbers started coming out in New Jersey, that 90%, first it was 80%, then it was like 90% of all the bets were being done on mobile. They were like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, that's just not the kind of things that go on out here. And then, I mean, one of the things that points bet did, I mean, I, I was in, I was in Nevada when this, when this happened, I was in Vegas and we, it was actually, it, it happened on one of our shows at VEASAN and points bet decided to quote unquote, change the rules. They would pay people out in the third quarter. They would just, if your team was winning the third quarter, they'll give you most of your bet back just because they decided they would. And some of the old time bookmakers, one of which who was one on, on one of our shows at Visa was going crazy. He was literally pulling his hair out. That's not the rules. That's not how we do it here. The game wasn't over yet. It was the third quarter. How can you give them all the money if you, but there are no rules anymore, right? That's right. That's what well, so well, well, well. it really is. That's great. Excellent. What, what do you do, Wayne, in terms of uh, obviously 76 Capital is a pretty well-known entity at this point, but to make sure that entrepreneurs are aware of you so that, that next great entrepreneur might call you as opposed to another VC? You know, Matthew, that, that's a, one of the most important things that we think about at 76 Capital every day is how we are putting ourselves in the middle of traffic. You know, how do we make sure that we are talking to all of the entrepreneurs or as many of the entrepreneurs around the world who are looking to innovate and change and transform the sports industry. So we put ourselves out there as much as possible. We do shows like this. And again, thank you to all of you and Data Art for having me as part of this. I mean, I, this is incredible because it's, we just, you just never know where you're gonna find that next great entrepreneur and how they're gonna to come to us. So you put yourself out there as much as possible. That in that, from, from our perspective, I mean, that's just reminding people of what we do, talking to you know, others in the industry. Uh, that's, you know, we have our own 76 Capital Leadership Series and we do a lot of traditional media and social media. We are always reaching out to the entrepreneurs that we've already invested in and some of the CEOs and executives that work with us, and they refer us opportunities. We talk to the other investors in the industry, and we want to figure out ways that we can all work together to, to build um, this industry. Because, you know, look, 76 Capital, we can't do it ourselves, right? We can't do it all ourselves. What, what we specialize in is getting involved very early, at the very early stage of a business when it's, when it's quite frankly an idea. But when that business grows to becoming a 10, 20, 30, $40 million business, we need, you know, we need the bigger guys to come in. We need other types of investors to come with us. So some of those investors will invest with us early in, in, in the um, life cycle of these businesses. And some of them will introduce the companies to um, the, introduce them to the companies later in, in, the, in their life cycle. Um, a great example of that is is our company Nerd Street Gamers, and you know it's one of our one of our esports companies. And it was a company that you know it was truly an idea. John Fazio had this idea of creating physical and digital, in, you know, um, basically a physical facility with the greatest technology inside of it, as well as 
online tournaments for esports players. Where can young people go to play video games? If the four of us and one of our other friends, you know, came together and created a team for League of Legends, and it's a five on five game, right? We need to find another five. And if the five of us want to go play another five, where do we go to play if we want to play in person? Because we can't all hook up our computers together. I, mean, I don't know how to do all that, but like if we if there was a place like if we want to, if five of us and five other people, we want to go play basketball. You guys are in, Man, you know, in Manhattan or whatever. We can find a court and go play. No problem. But from an esports perspective, where you, where do you go? So that's one of the things. So he was, I was like, wow, he's solving this huge infrastructure issue, you know, in uh, across the 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 the, um, the esports industry. So we took that company from a little tiny company. We brought in Comcast as an investor. They became a great partner of ours. Then we brought in Five Below, the, the, the young, the retailer that works, that, that basically their customers are young people. Wait, young people play video games. Okay. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So they then said, well, we'll put 100 local hosts, our esports facilities next door to our stores all across the country. So we're opening up 100 esports facilities right now all across the US. We just opened up our second in California. We're about to open up our third, and then we're doing something even bigger for our fourth. Um, we're super excited about that. We have ones in Texas and in St. Louis and in Philly and just all over the place, we're opening them up. And it's so exciting to see what's happening now. But at the same time, then we're growing this business. And then we just brought in Founders Fund. And if you know Founders Fund, they were the fund behind Facebook and SpaceX and Palantir and and uh, uh, they most recently did Airbnb, right? And so this was so exciting that they're now investors with us. They're now helping build this business. They're leaning in as their you know main esports investment. That's so exciting. But like we like we we got it. We did our part at the early stage, and then we bring in the others to really help us really expand and grow these businesses and hopefully turn them into to really successful businesses. And the one cool thing about the one thing, there's so many cool things about Nerd Street Gamers, but the one amazing thing that I love more than anything is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide access to all. We're trying to diversify, you know, you know, enable, enabling everyone to have an opportunity to play um, a video game at the highest of levels to be able to get a college scholarship at the over 200 colleges that have that offer scholarships today for kids who play video games. Yes, you guys understand that. But to a lot of people, that's like, whoa, that's crazy that you can go to college because you're good at playing video games. And then at the same time, to become a professional and some of the professional you know, players make millions of dollars. You know, guys like Ninja, he has his own sneaker deal with Adidas. I mean... <laughs> Right. Like, right who would have ever thought? But that's the world that we're in right now. And then, by the way, you know, we go and going back to betting. There's a lot of betting that goes on in the, in the esports world. But that's something. Talk about something that has an opportunity to really turn into something here in the United States. That's a big opportunity because the traditional sports books really don't know the difference between League of Legends and Overwatch, or right. just throw in any other game you want. They don't. They know they they'll kill you. You know, they'll take all your money on in basketball, football and the traditional sports. But when it comes to this other stuff, they need. And that's where young people, that's where entrepreneurs have an opportunity to. You know, build amazing companies that no one ever seen before. Is there, is there anybody out there? Uh, Try working as a company on setting odds for esports gambling. Like to your point, the traditional guys don't know that from a hole in the wall. So the actual setting of the odds must be really hard in that arena. So it's happening as we speak right now on a global basis, right? Um, offshore, quote unquote. Um, there are a few, a few books have taken, you know, take take bets on esports on a regular basis here in the US very few um but and then it all but also because it's a state by state situation certain states you're not able to bet on on, on esports from a legal perspective i say from a legal perspective because it's happening it's also i mean the the betting also occurs you know across different types of currencies and it's it it's it's amazing kind of what goes on um kind of under the I guess under the fold, um, but yes, the oppor the opportunity to become 
the you know the dominant esports book is still possible today. Uh, the score, as an example, out of Canada, John Levy and his team. Oh my God! I mean, they're they're the there's there's first of all, I just love John and his team, and um, I love the fact that when they went public, the video on their investor relations page was my interview on our 76 Capital Leadership Series with John. I, I, I thank him for that all the time. It's, it is still up there today, which is pretty cool. So I, I, I love that, you know, we, 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 we basically, we had to take our show to video because we've been all over the, all over the world, you know, doing pa- sports betting panels. And we kind of have this kind of back and forth. It's a lot of fun that we, we do together. But the reason, anyway, the reason I mentioned John, sorry, is that he and actually his sons, I mean, his sons work with him um, and they are very, very big um, in the, into the esports world. And they have an opportunity to be one of the, to be one of those books as a leader. But, mm-hmm. but at the same time, a number of the other books are now bringing on experts across the esports industry because they need that help. You know, 75 year old Jimmy Vaccaro, who runs the South Point, he doesn't know what we're talking about when it comes to esports, and he doesn't want to know it. But my God, he'll tell you some stories about when he booked the, you know, he put the odds up there for the Buster Douglas Mike Tyson fight. It's one of the greatest stories I ever heard. But like, those are these are the things that like, the, you know, these guys. That's what they know. But that's that's where you know when you start to see what's next. That's where we have really incredible opportunities. And and my God, I mean, as you can tell, it's fun. It's exciting. Right. It's the it's really coming. It's all coming down the pike today. That's great. Uh, and by the way, your your leadership podcast series is great. I actually tune tune into that a couple of times. You've had some great guests, um, and this has been great, Russell. I, you know, I know. I think we could talk to Wayne all day long. I mean, yeah, your energy. We can, and, and <laughs> and we can go on and on. You align up so much with what Data Art in this team is passionate about. I mean, when Russell told us. You know, at Data Art, we got to get into this business in the U.S. Look what we've done overseas. And we saw you and we're like, oh, this is the guy we have to follow because this is where we want to be as a company. We want to be building companies in the future, you know, that are really, really smart, really savvy tech people that need tech partners. So we're going to always be stalking you, always be trailing you um, (laughs) because it's great because you are where the puck's going, I think. Uh, And we don't want to take too much of your time. So we're going to have to have you back. Well, we're gonna I'd have to have Russell point. join one of your your next events. A- absolutely, I'd, I'd I'd love that. I'd love for us to find ways to work together. I'd love for us to, you know, continue this conversation because you're right. I mean, it's it's sports, it's entrepreneurship, but it's tech. Like you need yeah. all three right now. Like you can't you can't go into this without it. I mean, you can't even run a a baseball team, a hockey team, a basketball team, a football team, you need technology, you need analytics, you need the data, you need to be able to capture the data. And so like, you know, just, just again, over, over Matthew's head is that is the hockey stick. There will be, you know, in the next five years, every stick, every ball, every bat will be smart. It has to be right. So you have to collect all that data, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. data art, right. Collect all the data, (laughs) analyze all that data, but where does that data go? The data can go to a lot of places. In the past, it was like, oh, I collected some data. You know, I'll give it to my coach. I'll give it to my trainer, whatever. Right. You know, no, <laughs> right? That's going to go to the owner. That's going to go to your agent. That's going to go to that's going to go to the media company. It's going to go to the sports betting companies. And where else in the future? Like what? What else? Where? Where will this? Where will this? Where will this go? You know, we think about one of the things I have to mention because I think, you know, from a technology perspective and what you guys do and what the, you know, the, you know, you talked about, you know, you guys, you were the tech for Betfair, right? So like that, that kind of a model is not possible right now in the U.S. But what did we say earlier? We're all about making the impossible possible. So when you start thinking about a market, a true market for sports betting, what will that look like? There are a lot of smart people who are now thinking about that right now. How will this really, really look in the future? How will it look when people are trading, trading, like literally trading like they do in, in Europe, guys, right? I mean, this is, again, we're not reinventing the wheel 100% here, but like we, you're, you're literally trading and how much more fun, at least for me, to, to trade the Eagles-Giants game instead of like Apple and Microsoft. I mean, like, who cares about Apple and Microsoft? 
Eagles, Giants. I mean, I live and die that for that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's what is going to happen on a scale that some of the smartest, some of the, the, the most highly capitalized traders on Wall Street today, the electronic traders, the major, major hedge funds, the market makers, they are salivating over this market here in the US. And many of them have been testing this overseas for a while now. They have teams of people in you know, different, different countries in Europe and they're just, they're trading American sports on potentially Betfair, right? I mean, who knows, what, whatever, they're, whatever they're, so when that comes here, whoa, that's gonna be wild. I mean, cause you know, they're, you know, would you, again, like, Sports fans, would you rather day trade stocks or could you day trade sports and sports games and props? I mean, oh my God. I mean, and the amount of props, we just, you know, we just wrapped up the NFL draft. The NFL draft next year is going to be in, it was, it was missed. It was supposed to be Vegas two years ago, right? When, when Goodell did it from his living, from his uh, basement. But now next year it's going to be in Vegas. And hopefully everyone's going to be vaccinated and everyone will be safe and all that kind of stuff. But, oh, my God, it's almost better that it's kind of, you know, it was pushed out because it's going to be a complete mob scene. Yeah. I mean, you're going to bet on yeah. every single thing. Yeah. And that's the other thing that you, the U.S. the U.S. market hasn't really even fully caught up with the fact that you don't need to put your bet in before the face off, before the kickoff, before the tip off. You can bet all game long. You just want, you just happen to be turn on your TV and it's the third quarter and you have only have two minutes to bet. You can bet in those two minutes. You can bet who's going to make, make the next three pointer. You can bet what the next pitch is going to be. You can bet all these different types of things. And by the way, how is that all possible? Data arts guys, technology, right? <laughs> right? It's technology is that what's allowing all this to happen. Because exactly. the way the sports books had run in Nevada and in line across Las Vegas was it was very manual and it was it was easily handled. These guys could handle it. They're super smart. They do math in their heads and they do they know how to you know lay off this money and do that. We have too much money here, there, move the line, this and that. But when it's happening, when a computer or a machine is moving the lines, there is no brain out there human brain that can do this fast enough and we see that on wall street we see that in sports betting in europe it's just not here yet there are some things that are in in the way but you know who says the wire act can't come down who says there can't be a a, a federal you know sports betting bill i don't know why not just because everyone spent all this time going state by state well some you know group of legislators you know in in congress go you know what we're just we're going for, we're making this thing federal because, or I don't know, President Biden, I mean, he's a huge sports fan. He's like, screw it. My next big thing is federal sports betting. I mean, I don't think he's going to do it, but I mean, he played football in college. He loves sports more than anything. He's a Philly sports fan. He's a University of Delaware guy. I don't know. Maybe he's like, I'm making sports betting federally legal and that's it. Bam. You know, and well, what happens then? That means that all of the, you know, all the money that's moving around, it's not a state by state basis. It comes all together. And that creates a market that creates a pool of capital to be able to bet. And we haven't, if that happens here in the U.S., I mean, we're going to need, you know, you guys better hire some tons of tons of, of data scientists because you're going to need them because they're going to be so much opportunity. It'll be incredible. Yeah. Good point. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, Wayne, thanks again for joining us. We you know, really appreciate the time. Uh, this was super interesting for all of us. Well, I'll speak for Kevin and, and Matt. <laughs> uh, you know, very insightful, and uh, we'd love to have you back on. Uh, you know, in, in the future, I think we can, as Kevin mentioned earlier, continue the conversation probably for hours with all the stories that you can probably tell us. <laughs> um, so, thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, again, super appreciate it. It's been awesome. Thanks, Russell, Kevin, and Great. Matthew. I've loved every second of it. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne.